Hello, this is Gene Vino from the Susquehanna River Basin Commission. And today I'll be conducting one of three part interviews on the Bill Meyer Quarry located in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. With me today, I have the project manager and two biologists that were really instrumental in the Bill Meyer Quarry. Pierre, welcome. Thanks, Gene. Uh, my name is Pierre McCoy. I'm a hydrogeologist in the planning and operations department here at SRBC. And I've been working this project for a couple of years now. So I'll turn it over to Ellen to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Ellen Campbell. I'm the supervisor of the monitoring and assessment program at SRBC. And I helped Pierre um, once we started looking at the environmental parts of this project. Brianna? Hey everybody, my name is Brianna Hutchison. I'm an aquatic biologist at SRBC and my role in the project has primarily been um, what I'll call uh, field operations for the biological monitoring. Well, thank you, Brianna, Ellen, and Pierre. I, I asked the three professionals from SRBC to participate in this series of discussions about the Billmore Quarry. When I first had the opportunity to hear about this project, I, I thought it was a a success story from the beginning and a major undertaking. And Pierre, to kick things off, you know, why don't you tell us just a little bit about the project? I call it the Bill Miller Quarry Project. And what do you mean with it being a water storage and how does that relate to the overall mission of the SRBC? Well, Gene, um, the commission is tasked with finding water that can be used to augment low flows during periods of drought in the Susquehanna River and its tributaries. Uh, one way we can accomplish this is by looking at reservoirs and quarries to see if we can find some water that we can use. Uh, in 2016, we were approached by the Lancaster Solid Waste Management Authority, or LICSWAMA, uh, about one of their quarries near one of their waste energy facilities, and we started investigating it. Well, you know, my research for this project you know, took me in various different locations from various reports and documents, and I assume you just don't start pumping water into this picture which we are looking at. And for those viewing, the picture behind me is the actual quarry, which we will show more of uh, during the course of these discussions. But you said it's a water source and it's in an abandoned quarry and it was turned into a water storage reservoir. So what am I looking at uh, before we get into this? I know you have something on the screen. That is the actual quarry, is that correct? Yes, yes, it is. Um, you know, every project's unique, obviously. We have geology in different uh, situations. Uh, what we have here on the picture is a, a picture from the 1890s when they were using um, you know, some steam shovels and whatnot. But one of the things we look at when, for storage um, assets is that we really want to make sure that we don't impact the local surrounding water sources, wetlands, streams, and that if we use this water, we aren't impacting our surrounding area. So that's the first thing we do. We kind of do a phased approach. So this picture here was kind of a good uh, beginning because seeing that in the 1890s it wasn't filled with water, we thought, well, maybe it does hold enough water for us to use. So what I'm looking at uh, here on this screen is that is in 1890, the actual quarry, they're, they're digging out the various nutrients and the minerals, and you now get this in a different condition. So why don't you explain the next steps? Right, well, the next step, there's a, the few steps. The first step, we have to make sure that um, there's enough water in the quarry itself. Is it worth uh, actually pumping out? Two, we have to make sure we don't impact our water resources around the quarry. And three, we have to check for invasive species and endangered species to make sure we don't, one, impact our, our endangered species, and two, also not spread invasive species throughout the basin. So through this phased approach, we kind of went through different uh, periods. The first thing we did is we actually found a bathymetric survey for the quarry, which is essentially dragging some, some LIDAR or radar down through the quarry to see how deep it is and get some volume estimates. And this is the next picture I'm gonna show you here, our result that we had after doing this survey. And what we found is in the quarry that is about 29 acres, that there is a dividing well between two basins below the water line. And it was approximately 130 feet deep at its maximum, but an average depth of about 90 to 110. So that was a good stepping stone. Wow, uh, you know, I mean, the previous slide showed a, a great history of the origination of the quarry and how it looked then. And fast forwarding, you know, now you take this idea and make it into a po possibility of a water storage unit, as you stated. So this next slide you're showing me is, uh, if you will, the pump test, do I understand? Uh, if you can go forward to the next slide. 
Yeah, the, so the next step, once we have a, a desktop idea of how much water was approximately 500 million gallons based on our bathymetry, we, we think, oh, that's a good, good quantity of water. Let's go to the next step and see, is it really there? You know, are we, are we actually having that many gallons in that area? So what we do, this is the slide I'm showing you here, is we installed some temporary pumps and associated pipes so we could try and, and pump it out and see how does it react? How much water is actually there? Is it recirculating from the, the river? Are we impacting wells and whatnot? So we pumped in the fall of 2017, I believe, for about 27 days, maybe 30 days, um, at a pretty good rate, five to 6,000 gallons a minute. And we found, after we're done doing our testing, that we had about 425 million gallons of water with minimal impacts to local water resources, which is the good news. Wow, I mean, you actually surveyed this for endangered invasive species. And can you elaborate just a bit on that? I mean, did that survey turn up anything? <laughs> that actually was a big part of our project. Um, we do very invasive and, and, and endangered species survey for every site, and sometimes we get some, some endangered species, but this one was rather unique. Um, we actually ended up finding uh, quagga mussels. Uh, in the endangered species category, we found that there were a local bald eagle and, and some bog turtle habitat potential. So we went out and surveyed to make sure there weren't any at our site. Turns out that we did not have those situations, so we were good to go on those. But we did, have, we did have, unfortunately, the quagga mussels, which my colleagues here in monitoring and protection uh, know a lot more about than I do. Well, and we are going to get Brianna and Ellen because I understand there were some serious issues with quagga mussels that we will talk about. But Pierre, I want to thank you for the history of the Bill Meyer Quarry that dated back to the 1890s and all that transpired. And as we get to the biologist in our next clip here, with Brianna and with Ellen, I, I think they're going to talk a, a lot about what you mentioned about the quagga mussels and what happened. So I want to thank you for your time today, Pierre, and I look forward to the next discussion with you, Ellen, and Brianna. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you today, Pierre. Thank you, Gene.